Hi class! Welcome back to another lesson of ceramics with Miss Tara. Today we will be talking about choosing your clay. And I'll go over the differences between low fire, mid fire, and high fire clay, um, finding the consistency of clay that would best suit the kind of work you want to make, and even digging your own clay. So stick around. Now before we dive in, just a couple things. Um, as some of you know, I have a chronic illness and sometimes I have trouble getting enough calories. So this tube on my face is just a feeding tube. It's no big deal. We don't need to talk about it. Second, I believe that art education should be accessible to everyone. That's why I'm doing all of these classes and lessons on a donation basis only. So um, I have this little virtual tip jar and I'll show it to you at the end too. You can pause it and take a look at ways that you can send me a buck or two. Um, and it's just a way so that, you know, if you're enjoying this series and you can afford to send a little contribution my way, awesome. If you can't afford to, that's fine. You're completely welcome here regardless. All right, let's get started. All right, so I'm a pretty visual person and I like making charts and graphs to understand things. If this doesn't work for you, that's fine. Just listen. So um, in our last lesson, we talked about what cones are and why they're important. Um, and if you don't know the answer to those questions, definitely go back and watch that video before you watch this one. Otherwise, a lot of this isn't going to make sense. So cones have kind of a weird structured system. Um, zero is right in the middle here. And to this side are low fire cones, which are like cone zero, one, zero, two, etc. And um, kind of like positive and negative numbers. Um, and then to this side are just cones like one, two, three, four, five. So we'll start with, um, we'll start way at the very bottom cone number. So around cone 18 or 19, um, this is considered like a special effects. This is the temperature or the heat work that you will fire things to that you're decorating with metallic lusters, um, decals, overglazes, enamels, a lot of like special effects. Um, these are typically done in an electric kiln, and again, that's cone eight, zero 018. All right, let's, I'm just gonna show you up close so hopefully you can kind of read it. Um, let's talk about low fire clay. So uh, this is cones zero 06, zero 05, and zero 04. Um, an example of this clay would be like if you ever go to a paint your own pottery studio, typically the pieces that you'll be glazing are low fire. Um, most flower pots are also low fire and some sculptural and functional work is low fire as well. Um, let's get to the pros and cons. So pros, it takes less energy. Uh, you don't have to go up to as high a temperature. The kiln doesn't have to be on as long. It's a little easier on your kiln and the elements. It's a little easier on your electric bill. Um, a con is that since the clay doesn't really fully seal, you need to have glaze on every surface that is intended to be used with food. Um, let's see. Another pro, it has a brighter color palette. There are lots of really bright glazes and underglazes that stay super vibrant at this temperature. Now, um, in the higher ranges, you can still get a lot of colors, but some colors are particularly tricky to work with, especially purples. Um, a con, these pieces are usually not quite as strong as mid-range or high fire. Um, a pro, you can sometimes do the bisque and the glaze in the same firing. We'll get that into more in the next lesson when I talk about the different kinds of firings, but um, most clay requires that you do at least two firings. However, with this one, there are products you can use where you just sculpt your piece, you paint it, and you fire it. And it's easy as that. Um, and the the last con is it's more of a personal preference thing. I don't think that the glazes for low fire have quite as much depth as the glazes for high fire or mid range. Again, personal preference. If your aesthetic, if your style is all about punchy bright colors, this might be the range for you. Okay, moving on to mid range. This is my home. This is the range that I love to work in. And it's cones five and six. Um, Typically, this is fired in an electric kiln, though there are always exceptions to that rule. 
And some examples are most functional work and dinnerware. Um, one of the biggest pros to this temperature is that, or to this range, is that it fully vitrifies the clay. So that means that enough reaction takes place in the kiln that the clay becomes impermeable like a stone. That means that you don't have to glaze every surface for it to be food safe. Um, it also has less risk of like taking on water in the pores and then cracking if it gets cold. Um, a lot of things. Basically, it's just more food safe, it's more durable. Um, uh, a con is that it does take more energy. You're going to a higher temperature, you, you have your kiln on longer, you'll be using more energy. Um, if this is the range that you use consistently, your kiln might have a little shorter lifespan. For me, it's worth that, but for you, it might not be. Um, there's a good color palette. There are a lot of really cool glazes available for this range, and I'll get more into that when we talk about glazes, but there are a lot of really cool examples, lots of neat layering that you can do. Um, however, you don't have quite the bright, punchy colors available at low range. So it's just personal preference. I like more earthy colors that have some vibrancy, so this fits me really well. The other really big pro to mid-range is that it's the most common range used in community studios, in college studios, in most adult ceramic classes. Um, so learning it is really helpful if you don't have your own kiln and you're working in a shared space. Um, and finally, another con to both mid-range and high is that typically there are there are some exceptions, but like most of the time your pieces are going to need at least two firings. One down at the low fire temperature for the bisque firing and one at the um, maturing temperature, which would be mid-range or high. And again, I'll get into that in the next lesson. But that kind of explains mid-range. It's my home. I love it. I love mid-range clay. That's what I'll be working with in this class, so yeah. Right, and on the most badass end of the spectrum, we have high fire, which is cones 10 and higher. Now, these temperatures cannot really be achieved in an electric kiln without being real hard on your kiln. So typically, these firings take place in a gas-powered kiln um, or a wood-fired kiln which is a whole other thing. Wood firings are in insane and intense and amazing, and I would love to do one someday, but it's not something you really just start out with. Um, anyway, some examples are wood-fired art, functional work. Um, there are some really beautiful clays and glazes at these temperatures. True porcelain is translucent at this temperature. Um, you can get really delicate ethereal work. Um, you can see a lot of more like traditional ceramic techniques used at this temperature, etc. So some pros and cons. Um, a pro, the pieces tend to be pretty strong and have a lot of really interesting effects. A con, uh, requires a gas or wood kiln. Um, pros, the reduction and oxidation in the kiln produce a range of effects. So when you're using a gas kiln, you can control the input of oxygen and the input of, and the input of the gas that combines to create combustion. And if you have more gas than oxygen, you're creating an oxygen poor environment known as a reduction environment. And what this does is it chemically reacts with the glazes um, and pulls metal oxides to the surface. So often glazes fired in a reduction environment will be lustrous or shiny or maybe turn out more red than you would expect. Um, if, however, you switch it and you create an oxygen-rich environment, your colors will be different. That red glaze might actually turn out green. Um, and this can be used to your advantage in getting really cool effects with glazes and clays, or it can mean that you're completely surprised when you open the kiln, which has definitely happened to me. Um, so finish can be unpredictable. The, the gas kiln is definitely a pro and a con. 